Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Thursday, April 5th, 2018. Let's take a look at our solar conditions real quick. Our solar wind speed is on the incline at 445.8 kilometers per second with a density of about 7.8. No sunspots to report of today. This will be the fourth consecutive day without sunspots. We are looking at now 56 days for 2018 without sunspots. Taking a look at our KP indices. Sitting at a 2 right now, a 3 earlier today. Uh, not quite yet storm levels, but we are monitoring this large coronal hole that is almost Earth-facing. And as well as this coronal hole, now the Earth's magnetic field will probably feel the effects of this on April 9th. They originally had thought the 8th, and they are pushing this back to the 9th. We'll take a look a little closer here. Also, we had a solar eruption as well. And there are some claims already that this is possibly tied in with the earthquake that we saw, which we'll get into that here in a little bit, in California, the 5.3. Very impressive footage from that as well. But take a look at this coronal hole. Definitely grew a little bit more since last time we were monitoring this. And like I said earlier, Noah expects uh, us to feel the effects from this on the 9th of April. So we will keep our eyes on that. And let's move along here from our space weather to a story that was covered a couple days ago. Over here at RoySpencer.com. Says here, after continuing delays due to cold weather, the National Park Service daily updated for the DC Tidal Basin Cherry Blossom predicts that the peak blossom time will finally be this weekend. But you might want to get out the snow shovel if you want to get out and see this annual event. The latest weather forecast models are predicting anywhere from 6 to 18 inches of snow by Sunday morning beginning late Friday night, April 6th. And here is a look at the forecast here. That's the GFS. Here is the European models. They also agree. Very heavy snowfall. Now, lots of talk about this possibly being a nor'easter. This is not quite a nor'easter. This will have the punch with the snowfall that a nor'easter would have with winds. But this is not going to be the same kind of storm as uh, the nor'easterns, especially since it's not going to be raking the coast. This will shoot off to the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, weather model forecast of total snowfall by Sunday morning, April 8th. The D.C. metro area is in the circle. Forecast graphics courtesy of weatherbell.com. And if you think this is just temporary cold shot, that will immediately give you give way to warmer temperatures. Here's the GFS model forecast of temperature departures from normal averages over the next 10 days shows a widespread averaging of 10 to 10 to 12 degrees below normal and this is an anomaly map uh, we talked about this earlier today and it is showing a difference of about eight degrees here in western new york six to eight degrees um, below normal in a 10-day period but there is some good news on the horizon with that and i'll get to that here in a minute let's go ahead and take a look at shimadoki erupts 6.7 kilometer ash cloud that's the highest since the eruption started the eruption set ash cloud up 2200 i'm sorry 22,000 feet above sea level the highest since a series of eruptions began on march 1st the eruption also produced minor pyroclastic flows southeast of the crater in the direction and I think they're talking about the pyroclastic flow that was uh, started just a few days ago that we reported as well. Let's take a look at some of this amazing footage that we have here of this eruption. I have seen these pictures all over Twitter today. Definitely a little bit more impressive than the first eruption that we had saw. The lightning at the top, the plasma, it's amazing. What a great time to be alive, folks, to be able to have the equipment and the ability to catch these events as they happen. 
This is amazing. Shallow 5.3 earthquake today, Los Angeles, California area. A strong earthquake of uh, M3 measured today on the Richter scale hit the coast of Los Angeles. The epicenter was located 17.4 miles southwest of Santa Cruz. Uh, it was felt over 400,000 people estimated have felt light shaking. There was no threat of a tsunami. There are no reports of da damage. However, the quake reportedly swayed buildings in a wide area, including West Los Angeles, Burbank, and Woodland Hills. And I don't know about you guys, but I saw some footage of that as well. Um, now, like I said earlier, a couple of people think that this earthquake uh, action and the solar eruption had a little bit in common today. And I'm looking at the timestamp, and there could be a correlation, but uh, that's still up in the air right now. I'm not the expert on that. I will look to that, though. And early season red spites appear over Czech Republic. Two red spites, transit optical phenomena appearing as luminous reddish orange flashes have been recorded over the Czech Republic on April 4th, 2018, marking the early beginning of the 2018 sprite season in the Northern Hemisphere. All right, how's that? Is that better? Lucky photographer this season was well-known Martin Popek, who captured them above Western Czechia on April 4th. Uh, these are common, or they become more common as of late. Uh, I remember the first time I saw these was late 2016. Saw a few uh, pictures of these last year, and uh, here we are April 4th already being captured. So once again, thanks to watchers. Dot news looking at our ocean anomaly temperature here Ooh, i'll have to zoom that in sorry folks bear with me we'll get this right all right so today we have good lord well I'll just take my word for it um, we are above the baseline on the North Atlantic anomaly temperature today. Uh, yesterday I reported on it, and it is just barely above the baseline, as you see right there. I just wanted to show that. That's something I kind of want to watch from here on out. And as Starman had told me, this will, uh, just because it dropped dramatically at once, doesn't mean it's going to stay down the bottom. And already we can see it's recovering most of the temperature drop that we saw in the North Atlantic so a lot changes in just eight nine days and uh, that's why we are so uh, adamant about taking our time with the info that we get and this is going to be a process thing where we just have to wait wait and see go to our tropical tidbits once again take a look at North America and the precipitation map that we are looking at here for the coming days I wanted to point this out out of all the days that we've showed this on our weather report uh, we're finally looking at something after this week the 8th and this is the big storm that everybody's going to be talking about you got the atmospheric river already underway in California in the Northwest Oregon Washington Northern California and then we get the development of our big system here in the Midwest here in the South Louisiana Arkansas Mississippi and that's on Saturday things really start picking up midday Saturday we've got heavy snowfall in West Virginia Southwest Pennsylvania Southeast Ohio and light snow in New England and upstate New York but heavy rains in the south and as we move through the weekend this system quickly moves off to the Atlantic Ocean uh, the snow forecast, especially for western New York, and originally had been thought that we were expecting anywhere from 2 to 4 inches. And as you see here on Friday, where we were supposed to start seeing the snow, we start off as light snow. But as the day progresses, we get rain working in. So that's going to melt whatever does accumulate in the morning, that rainfall. And as you see here, 
throughout the day Saturday. This moves off to the coast. Ohio gets light snow at the end. And by Sunday morning, this system is off to the Atlantic Ocean with our next system coming across from the northwest. Going on to April 8th, some snow in the northern plains moves across the Ohio Valley. By Monday, it is off the Atlantic Ocean, upstate New York. Some light sh snow showers are possible. And by Tuesday of next week, probably the quietest day of the week next week, other than the rain that we have developing in Florida and then the Northwest. But the point I'm getting to here, folks, is after the 12th and the 5th, well, between the 12th and the 13th, we don't really see any more snow chances. This is far up north in Minnesota and the Dakotas into Canada by next Saturday. And as that moves off into Canada, it seems like after the 15th, our snow chances are starting to get a little bit weaker. And a good sign that we might be in for spring finally throughout the rest of the United States. But that doesn't count out all the rain chances that we're going to have. And I'm going to have to assume right here, the snow chances that we see here in Idaho and Wyoming, those are going to be the higher elevations. It looks like Michigan, you got, might get one more hoorah before the end of this winter. Or I should say the beginning of spring. Let's take a look at our temperature outlook now. And as we see, this is my favorite part of this right here. I'm going to back up first. Show us what little bit of cold wear I think we have left. Uh, and this is starting on Tuesday. We progress this week. Uh, especially here in the Northeast. Got a little bit colder here on Friday. Staying in the 30s here in Western New York. Ohio Valley, you're in the 40s. You guys were in the 70s on Tuesday, but that severe weather brought a cold front and it's cooled you guys down. But most of the country looking like spring-like temperatures. Friday and Saturday is going to be another cold weekend for much of the country in the north and the northeast. But by the time we get to Sunday to Monday, we start to see spring-like temperatures starting to work its way into the forecast and by Tuesday Wednesday everybody should be into the 40s if not 50s in some areas in most parts of the United States by Friday the 13th so there is light at the end of the tunnel and as I progress this forward we start to see some 60s and 70s creeping all the way up into western New York in the northeast I know many of us up here are ready for that kind of warmth Throughout the 15th, things are trying to warm up again. See 50s and 60s throughout most of the eastern part of the country, the southern part. Uh, the only areas we see staying cool right now is going to be the northern plains and the northwest. Uh, but other than that, it looks like we might be starting to see some signs of spring finally making its return to the United States. So I don't know about you guys. It's been a long winter for a lot of us here in the United States and in the UK and I know many of us are more than excited about looking at uh, temperatures that are going to be well above freezing and for the most part I mean we we had a couple systems that could be coming through within the next 10 days that could make more uh, conditions likely for flooding in the south again but so far fingers crossed the only major weather event we're going to be dealing with right now is that atmospheric river in California and that's something that they're going to keep their eye on uh, just because that you know they're forecasting anywhere from three to five inches of rain in the foothills and even along the coast they could see anywhere from two to four inches of rain so and quickly before I leave tonight I wanted to kind of show a glimpse of the temperatures and uh, precipitation across the region I know most of our listeners are watching right now um, Finally, Europe, UK, you guys are starting to look like you might be getting back into some normalcy here. Springtime weather, spotty showers throughout the week. And taking a look at the land down under. And you guys have had some cyclone action. Still looks like you got a really decent sized low pressure system that looks like it wants to evade the northeast section of the country. So we'll keep an eye on that as the storm progresses. And the temperatures for right now for Australia, uh, a lot of you are probably going to be jealous of this one. But it is hot, 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 hot. So hopefully the United States, Europe, and UK, we're not seeing fool's gold here. We're actually going to get a chance to get right back into, um, right back into uh, spring, into summer, that warm climate again. I know 
that I'm going to cherish every bit of it this summer after the, the season that we had. And, you know, one more thing before I go. I just, it, it was crazy to me to bring this up because Mari had told me that they had already pushed this back twice already this year. So what a way to end this winter slash beginning of spring with a possibility of people going to watch the peak cherry blossoms and could get dumped six to 18 inches of snow. So who knew? Mari, how's it going tonight? It's going great, Jake. Everybody being good to each other. We have, we have our flat earther friend who says we're fake news back oh. again. I just want to give her a shout out. Hey. Uh, is it Kelly? <laughs> Is that the one that said I sound like a robot? That's going to do it for us today at the Grand Solar Minimum. Please like and share and subscribe. We'll talk soon. Just kidding. No, really. Thanks for tuning in, guys. you got to have humor about this. We love you all out there, YouTube land. You guys are awesome. Thanks you to all of our subs who continue to support us on a daily basis. We really appreciate your support, guys. But, uh, nope. That's all for tonight. Uh, we will talk soon, though.